You look very uh, uh, Aspeny. I'm freezing my ass off. Yeah. And then you're you're doing great. I'm used to it. All right. Yeah. Live here. Cheers, uh, Aspen Klaus. Duncan. Klaus. Duncan. Klaus. Duncan Klaus. Good God. Um, sorry, I'm not yet in my element. Duncan Klaus. We are here in Aspen. Um, is it busy? Right yeah, now? Aspen's crazy right now. Why is that? Um, you know, holiday season. But the Aspen, celebrities Colorado. come into town. Right? Yeah, John Oates walked by the other day. Really? Um, I couldn't scramble to get a John Oates song playing on our radio quickly enough. You're a rich girl. Um, exactly. <laughs> or uh, Mariah is obviously in town. Have you seen Mimi walking All I around? Want for Christmas is you, Mariah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, Aspen's got celebrities. It's also got amazing locals and great tourists. And That's what I've noticed. So my wife and I have come here. This is probably our sixth time being here. And the third time during this week, and I think I like the off the off season way more. Yeah. By the way, or even just like not peak week of holidays or middle of spring break. Is that that's also a busy week? Yeah, that's insane. Um, okay. X Games is nuts. X Games is really fun, but chaos. When's X Games? End of January. End of January. Yeah. And so that'll be crazy. Different scene though, I assume, right? Oh, it's a totally different scene. It's like um, <laughs> you know, mostly college age group. Um, okay. I mean, we do more business that weekend than we do New Year's. No shit. Yeah. So you get a lot of people, I guess, okay, so the Tap House has been open for a, a year now, a right? A year, yeah. Okay. What was here before? I'm trying to remember. This was Peach's Cafe. Yeah. Peach's Corner Cafe. Okay. So what's going on? What, are you brewing anything back there? So, no. So our production facility, Aspen Brewing Company, is all based out at the Airport Business Center. Okay. Um, to comply with Colorado State Liquor Code, Aspen Tap is its own business. Okay. Um, in association or, like, licensing agreement with Aspen Brewing Company. Okay. Um, um, similar to how like Chubb Burger is part of Oscar, Oscar Blues, Blues, but not at the same time. Far out. Um, and so Aspen. Cheers, Tap. by the way. Cheers. Yeah. We Thank should, you. We gotta start over there. Mm -hmm. Cheers. By the way, this is supposed to be very conversational. Awesome. Usually Jay Schrader, my my co-host, is here with me, but he oh. couldn't make it. He's he's kind of the guy that asks the awkward questions. I'll try not to ask awkward questions. It's all good. Okay. I can so it. okay, so off off. What do you like? How much are you brewing now? Where like? So um, we have a twenty barrel brew house, okay. mostly forty and eighty barrel fermenters. Okay. Um, yeah, from when I started this business, uh, and I was working on a business plan in two thousand six, as an undergrad at CU Boulder. Moved up here after graduating spring of 2007. Um, my focus was like more the manufacturing beer business, packaged beer, you know, proper beer business. Um, this is obviously a pretty landmark piece of real estate in Aspen. We've had tap rooms, traditional just beer, popcorn, peanuts, pretzels type tap rooms right. for years, for 10 years. When we were moving and this piece of property was available, um, to me, it was just too good of an opportunity not to put it into action and make it, you know, a landmark place for Aspen Brewing Company. Um, again, it had to be its own business, but. Have you seen, I guess, the results that you're seeing, are they better than you'd expected? Um, yes, I'd say our foot traffic is better than expected. Um, you know, learning my way through the restaurant management crash course <laughs> oh, yeah, of good 2017, call. <laughs> um, or sorry, 2018. Um, has been wild. I, you know, before this, I don't think I had worked in a restaurant since high school. Um, I did work in a couple of different restaurants, so it wasn't like, yeah, whatever, but, um, shit, it makes the beer business seem pretty simple and straightforward. So what are you slinging in there? What are you selling for food? Um, we call it like a gastro pub, Alpine yeah. gastro pub. Um, so we have like, you know, our winter menu is like a croque monsieur, um, which is French ham and cheese served with tomato soup. Okay. Um, you know, my concept for the food was like great pub fare that goes well with beer. Yeah. Um, casual because Aspen, I think, needs more casual. Um, you know, you could refinance your mortgage and fine dine for a week and then be done. Realizing that with two kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think Aspen just needed more casual. Um, and yeah, the menu to me was like supposed to be stuff that goes well with beer and stuff that goes well with, you know, being in the mountains in the winter and we shift gears on our menu for the summer and try to make it, you know, post summer adventure. So if you come here, listeners, um, highly recommended. My first time at the Tap House, but I've had many of Aspen brews. 
But I mean, the the location's perfect. We're on Galena Street. Galena yep. and what is this? Hyman? Hopkins. Oh, Hopkins. Okay. Um, you got the slope. What's what's that run right there? That is uh, Little Nell, and you can see Bell Mountain. You can see okay. you know the gondola. Um, cruising up Aspen Mountain. I mean, one of our marketing slogans from day one has been drinking the view. Okay. Um, it works. So, yeah, this patio was kind of um, a pretty perfect one. Our first brewery location had a great view of Aspen Mountain. Our second tap room had a great view of Aspen Mountain because we were on a second floor. Okay. Um, but, yeah, when we started looking for space, you know, I was hopeful that we'd find a great view. Um, and we nailed bad. it. Are you from here? I'm not originally from uh, New York. New York? Then yeah. you went to, to Boulder to what? Smoke pot? <laughs> drink beer. Oh, drink. Okay, I forgot. There's that. There's that. Here. Um, yeah, I went to. I grew up, uh, born in New York City, raised New York, Connecticut, a little time in Massachusetts. The constant there was uh, a skiing family. Okay. Um, so I, you know, grew up skiing, ski racing, all that stuff. Like Vermont or where Vermont? Okay. Yeah, Sugar yeah. Bush, Mad River. I was. Uh, I went to DU for for uh, my PhD, and so. Okay. That's kind of expected to know yep. a little bit about skiing. Yep. That's where they get so many people is from Vermont. Yeah. That because that, that, anybody good from Colorado, I've realized, doesn't go to college to ski. Yeah. They, yeah. They go and so elsewhere. I got into, like, that's what got me into craft beer, though. Okay. Like, Vermont. Um, yeah, tell me about this. Like, Magic Hat Brewing uh-huh, Company. Uh-huh. Um, one of the first beers I definitely drank, at, you know, underage was, like, um, Magic Hat made single chair ale after the single chair at Mad River. And I was like, that's so cool. Okay. Um, so Mad River is like a skier only mountain and has the, I think it's the only single chair left in operation, maybe one of two. Really? Um, it's still one of the only skier only mountains. Okay. Okay. Um, Which means what? It's owned by like a co op of families and they don't allow snowboarders. That's amazing. Sorry, skiers wow. only. Skiers so, okay. Like so, so you get into the beer scene, all right? So, yeah, I got to Boulder, got into the beer scene. So, what, did you go to Boulder because of the beer? I mean, was that a motivation out of high school? Was, I want to do this. Um, I visited some friends I grew up with um, that were a little bit older, uh, grew up with skiing um, in Vermont with that were at CU Boulder already. Okay. Visited Boulder. I knew I wanted to get out of the Northeast, but um, I visited Boulder once in the fall, and it was like a beautiful fall weekend in Boulder, great weather, went to a football game, nice. you know, had a blast. And then um, I got accepted in the spring. Okay. I think it was around, I don't know. It was in the spring, and I came out and visited with my parents because they wanted to see it because I was excited about, you know, thinking about, yeah, maybe I'm going to go to Boulder. And had an awesome weekend in Boulder showing my parents around. Then we drove up here to Aspen, actually. My parents wanted to come spend a weekend in Aspen. It snowed so much that we got stuck in Colorado for another week and all I did was ski, miss some high school. Nice. Um, senior spring didn't really matter. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, hell yeah. This is like between Boulder and living in the mountains and whatever. Um, okay. I was, like, was there anything around here then in terms of, of, of breweries? So um, Flying Dog Brewing Company started okay. in Aspen. Okay. Um, also George Stran- like founded by George Stranahan of Stranahan's Whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesse Graber of Tin Cup okay. was part of that team. Um, Jesse was a friend of George's, to my knowledge, like was his sort of like jack of all trades. Yeah. Um, so Flying Dog started here. They were like late '80s, early '90s. Yeah. Yep. They lasted, I think, three years in Aspen, and then moved Flying Dog to Denver as a proper production facility. Okay. And they were kind of like the, one of the first real breweries in the like. I guess you can call it Rhino, yeah, but sort of near the ballpark. So wait, I guess I, I'd never thought about this. So Flying Dogs artwork, it would make sense that Ralph, that Ralph Steadman did it. Okay. Yep. Oh, I had no idea. I'll be damned. And George Stranahan was buddies yeah. with Hunter. Yeah. They both lived in Woody Creek. Okay. That's the whole Ralph Steadman piece behind it all. I'll be damned. Well, I guess I yeah. I'm trying to think. Okay. Okay. That's pretty impressive. Okay. So so. So I was in college and I was like. Aspen Brewing Company, Independence Pass Ale. Mm-hmm. I was like, ooh, that's catchy. Independence Pass Ale IPA. Yeah. Oh, I'll go homebrew a recipe for that. Okay. Um, so I was homebrewing with two college roommates, both big into craft beer. 
Um, one is now one of the owners of Call to Arms okay. in Denver. Yeah. Um, he's an old childhood friend, Chris Bell. Nice. Um, so we were both nuts over craft beer. Our other roommate sells beer in Portland, Oregon now. So we were pretty okay. into beer. Okay. Um, home brewing all the time. Yeah, it's like Aspen. And there's no brewery in Aspen, but yeah. there was Smugglers in Telluride. There was a couple in Summit County. There was... Um, Bonfire just opened in okay. Edwards. Yeah. So I was like, okay, the mountains seem like they have it. At the time, I thought Boulder and Denver had a lot of breweries. Whoops. 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 Yeah. Now, um, no. So what did you study in college then? English lit. Holy shit. Okay, to be honest, you're the first one that we've interviewed, or I've interviewed, um, Jay not being here, that doesn't have some sort of, uh, that has a humanities degree. Let's leave it at that. Usually they're all just kind of crazy ass, you know, scientists. But yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I studied film history, so it's nice, awesome. it's nice to have somebody yeah. that understands it. This yeah. is, that's impressive. Okay, so, so um, was this something? So yeah, so as, Flying Dog had like come, had a good turnout. The, community seemed to be around it or supported it yeah but then they left and they didn't really like keep a lasting impression here in terms of like every bar and restaurant didn't serve flying dog okay okay and so i actually cold called george stranahan um nice. and was blown away because he called me back like an hour later and was like yeah i'll meet you for a beer tomorrow and give you my whole story and why i did it and all okay. this stuff okay um so I met with him one afternoon and he was like, yeah, it was great. The community loved it. It was really receptive. Real estate was too much. We wanted to go proper manufacturing brewery route. So we moved everything to Denver, you know, go check out that place, whatever. Um, so I knew real estate was going to be a key part, part of it. But again, I was like, it wasn't like flying dog was in every bar and restaurant in Aspen. So I still saw that like, okay, there's still opportunity here. Okay. So you were thinking, okay, they're just, uh, you could leverage the market a little bit better maybe than flying dog had in yeah. order to kind of pay. Your yeah. I mean, again, like real estate's been, you know, real estate in any town, um, is hard yeah. real estate in Aspen's, you know, really hard. Yeah. Um, so I knew if like, okay, if we could navigate that, um, you know, a little bit of skill, a little bit of luck, a little bit of, you know, grit and determination and then you know things would fall into place not necessarily fall into place but things would work after that okay um so we started in 2000 square feet seven barrel brew house college what year? roommate 2008 yeah opened in 2008 okay um college roommate high school buddy head brewer four of us just grinding and out making it happen you know brewing non-stop um we grew out of that facility quickly which was great yeah where was that? Was that the same kind of? That was down Mill Street okay. behind City Mark or Clark's Market okay. there. Okay. Um, a cool little, you know, classic hole in the wall. But um, what I loved about that space was our brew system was separated from the tasting room okay. by the bar. Okay. So like no window, no wall, just you're smelling, listening to people brewing beer while you're having a pint. Okay. Um, and why did you like that? I mean, to it? me, that was uh, that's always been the dream. I don't know if we'll ever get back there in terms of like having the production and the consumer experience, like you know, so blurred. It's you know, yeah, um, that you're yeah having a beer, listening to some music, and somebody's brewing beer right behind the bar. Uh -huh. um, and you, and you like that? You like that separation? Because now I, the reason why I asked is there seems to be this pivot even in distilleries, right? To kind of have this open wall in which you kind of see what's what's going on. But yeah, there we is didn't something. didn't even have a piece of glass. It was literally the bar counter it. was the divider. Um, That's crazy. I thought that was a cool experience for the consumer. Oh, okay. Um, okay. The real estate in Aspen just like doesn't exist. Yeah. I can't put a manufacturing tank in here unless. You know, the fire department wanted to give me their building, but <laughs> not gonna happen. I don't I'm friends with them, but I don't think the chief, you know, fire chiefs yeah. hook me up with a building yeah. anytime soon. Okay, so 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 you're doing that. Um, what's the next? I've got plenty of questions in the back yeah. of my head here. Are you are you, do you? How much bigger can you get in the facility where you are now? Um, we'll do um, about five thousand barrels this year. We have new distribution throughout Colorado, so okay. we have. Um, expanded our production capacity in advance of two new distributors that has us covering the whole state now okay. um, for the first time ever and then we're teed up to be in a bunch of grocery stores yeah. um, which you know the whole industry is nervous but excited for um, 
you know, from liquor store owners on down, I think everybody's nervous and whatever, but um, it'll be interesting times in 2019 right out of the gate, like yeah. January 1, rock and roll. Yeah, um, you can you can almost sense the stress in Denver. Quite yeah, honestly, yeah. I mean, you can uh, everybody. Um, is but aware we're prepared of it. to grow. We're not like over leveraged, ready to do you know two hundred thousand barrels in six months. But yeah. um, we're ready to grow, and uh, yeah, we're excited for you know just still riding the wave of craft beer in Colorado. You make a good beer. I'll say this: this IPA is it's the best one I've had since I was in town. Um, I went to a place over there it serves a lot of different beers, and yep. this is the best I've had today. I'll leave it at that. My wife's Good. probably counting my beers. But um, <clears throat> okay, so so the plan is to kind of uh, is that the sense at least in the industry is kind of let's see what happens after January first, and then people will, will will kind of adjust accordingly. Um, yeah, I think from you know working with the grocery stores. You know, they have an educated guess of what's going to happen. Um, but somebody was telling me the other day, I don't know where I heard it, but it was somewhere, it was like, how much beer, how much is, um, like, the beer shift going to go from liquor stores to grocery stores? And somebody was like, oh, yeah, I think it's going to be between 10 and 60%. And you're like, oh. It's quite the... <laughs> it's quite the window there. Yeah. You're like, okay, I'll just plan my whole business around oh 10 to 60%. God. Okay, well, so, um, yeah, go ahead. So my two cents on it is one, um, you know, through this surge of craft beer over the last 10, 15 years, the beer market hasn't grown, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's just going to sh- change where people are buying their beer. I think, um, you know, grocery stores are going to be a great avenue for consumers. I think the the liquor stores that still like pride themselves on selection and great deals on, you know, having the world of craft beer in your liquor store. I still think is going to be wildly relevant. If you're a beer consumer, craft beer consumer, you're still going to go to, you know, Argonaut, Molly's, yeah. Hazel's, um, you know, all the big liquor stores. Um, I mean, a grocery store can't really do that, right? I mean, they're buying in no. bulk. They're, yeah, no. Kroger's not going to be able to I do think that. it's better. It's going to be better for Budweiser and Coors than it is for craft beer. Okay. Um, but again, like their market ha- is only shrinking. So I I don't know. I'm curious as anybody to see how it shakes out. We're excited to be working with, you know, the grocery stores and excited to have some placements. Um, we're also like not turning our back on the liquor stores that have sold our beer for years and have been great partners to us. Yeah, you know, for sure. Okay, so you're starting to get a little bit. Of, I mean, just as a beer drinker myself, a little competition. Roaring Fork makes a good beer. Yep. Um, this place is obviously different than Denver in the sense that you're not, you know, there's, there are not four breweries in one block, but right. how are you kind of developing your brand, circulating it? What is the Aspen brand, if you could kind of define it? Yeah, um, from day one, I knew that like, sweet, I was in college on you know my couch on a computer and I registered the business name with the Colorado Department of Revenue and got the website and did a trademark application I was like, sweet, okay, now I, you know, pretty much own the rights to Aspen Brewing Company. Now what am I going to do with it? Um, From a beer standpoint and a brand standpoint, I always thought Aspen would be a name that opens doors for us. Um, It gets people's attention, you know, around the world. Um, That was added pressure to deliver, you know, great product without, um, you know, without fail. And so... You know, to me, Aspen is like a timeless and classic destination. We wanted to deliver on like classic, mm-hmm. timeless beers that, um, you know, I think our IPA stands up to any IPA out there. And it's something that like you revisit, you drink often. I enjoy it. And we wrote this recipe 10 years ago and I still go for that beer all the time. So, so for the beer nerds out there, explain what's in this. Um, so Independence Pass Ale... IPA, again, like a catalyst for the business from me being a home brewer and being like, oh, Independence Pass Ale, IPA. Um, Maybe that's my English lit major coming through. Um, To it won gold medal at the World Beer Cup in 2016 for the English IPA category. And to me, the English IPA category is just a more well-balanced, you know, not malt centric or malt forward, but well balanced multi IPA. What kind of hops are you putting in this? Um, traditional Cascade, Columbus, Simcoe, Amarillo. Okay. Um, 
you know, again, it's supposed to be an IPA that like will stand the test of time. Yeah, no, it, it definitely has that flavor to it for sure. So what, what else is going on in there in terms of, uh, are you experimenting with anything? What are, what are your staples? How about that? Um, Independence Pass is our, our staple. This season's Blonde is our Blonde Ale. That's our other, you know, quote unquote flagship. Mm -hmm. um, we've been making that pretty much since we opened. We got, we made like our first seasonal beer as a spring blonde. Yeah. Um, you know, joking about like spring skiing, spring blonde, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it became our bestseller quickly in our tap room. And so we decided, okay, you know, you can't stop making your bestseller. So we made a slightly different version, but we made another blonde for the summer. And that was the summer blonde. And then all of our regulars were like, oh, are you gonna make a fall blonde? And we were like, all right, what are we doing with the blonde? We'll just make this season's blonde and okay. we'll keep it on year round. Okay. Um, the can has a you know blonde skier on it. Uh -huh. Seen it. Um, those are the two beers we've been making forever. Um, other than that, Pilsner's named after Aspen Mountain, Ajax Pilsner. Um, our Saison, Cloud Nine Saison, is like a traditional classic Saison. You know, to me, um, when we were making that recipe, Saison Dupont is like the gold standard to me of, of classic Saison. Um, our Cloud Nine Saison won the gold medal at the World Beer Cup for Saison 2014. Um, so we're just trying to you know, nail styles. You just kind of remind me that. So much of what uh, of what folks like you are doing is a passion, right? I mean, I would consider Aspen, BC, an extremely successful brewery, but here we are, right? You're freezing your ass off in the cold with me. I'm actually bundled good. up, but I mean, this is impressive. By the, I mean, this is—is is this the dream come true? Like having your own brewery right here in arguably the most beautiful town in America. I think. I mean, I love yeah. this place. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Aspen, like, yeah, brewing business is hard business. It's a thin margin business. It takes a lot of overhead. It's a shitload of work. Anybody in it knows that. Um, it's physical work. It's you know demanding work. Um, but yeah, on like the shittiest day I have, I grab a cold beer, pinch myself, look outside, and I'm like, "We're really doing it, Harry." Dude, we're really do. <laughs> Speaking of Aspen, <laughs> you know, two pairs of gloves the entire time. Yeah. So, uh, do you get to ski much? Um, I ski a fair amount. Okay. All right, like, you what's know, that mean? Like, um, Well, I, you know, if my brother or brothers-in-law are listening, they live in New York and Connecticut, so um, the number I put out there is, you know, rude and obnoxious yeah. to them. But um, I'd say I'd average between 40 and 50 days on the okay. hill a season. Okay. Do you have it? I can't ask you this. Never mind. I should cut it. Do you have any kind of deal with, uh, with Aspen uh, skiing where you can kind of um, ski for free? Unfortunately, Aspen Skiing Company has a long-standing partnership with Anheuser-Busch. Uh -huh. um, so we are in most of their bars and restaurants, but from like an event capacity or partnership capacity, we are um, kept on the sidelines. I gotta ask you um, before I forget, and I know we're, we're probably you're, you're getting cold. I'm getting cold. Okay, uh, what's the kind of again going back to the brand thing? What's that desired demo? Because uh, a lot of folks are trying to figure it out, especially in Denver, uh, whether it be a distillery or a, a brewery, who are they like, going after? Like, yeah. Um, so Aspen has its stereotype, right? Like it, everybody thinks like Jet Set, you know, Mariah Carey and billionaires um, when they think of Aspen. I think like, you know, I take that personally, obviously, I started a business here and it's a business to me that like speaks to the local community more right. than anything. And so I think the fact that we've been in business 10 years is a testament to the you know local community of Aspen um, that are, you know, pretty diverse group of people um, that have made different you know decisions to end up living here in Aspen and pursue you know, real careers and lives, but also living in this amazing little ski town. Um, so I think, you know, Aspen has a classic mountain demographic of like people that either make it in the outdoor industry or, you know, make real world jobs work out of here. Um, and a, you know, pretty eclectic mix of people in between from like, yeah, ski instructor in the winter or ski guy in the winter to raft guy in the summer and yeah. just live in the dream. I mean, those people are really living the dream when they're like, oh, I got 120 days this season. I know. 
But Which reminds me to ask you, so in terms of brewing, how many days a week are you guys, is it seven days a week now? Um, no, our production team's uh, five days a week, um, but we do a lot of like double brew days where, you know, one brewer's in at four or five in the morning and we're still brewing another batch till eight or nine o'clock at night. How often are you in there kind of meeting uh, folks? With this, in the past year I've been, you know, really trying to make sure Aspen Tap's running smoothly. Okay. And... We have an awesome production team that like has given me the ability to not be there a ton. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, I got into this because I loved making beer. I wish, you know. It's a good reason. Uh, yeah, it's a good reason. Um, you know, if, whatever, I'd love to brew a batch of beer every week, but just, you know, the growing pains of reality and reality of work, I, it's not where my time is best spent, right? What's the bar in town that that drinks the most Aspen Brewing Company beer? Um, the Red Onion, which is oh. Aspen's oldest bar. Um, they go through a ton of our beer. Um, it changes winter to summer. At our Highlands Ale House okay. um, has great selection of beer up at the base of Aspen Highlands. Okay. They're our biggest account in the winter, um, but they're pretty quiet up, up there in the summer. Okay. I'd say Red Onion year round. Do you uh, do you ever brew with uh, like anything coming in terms of like like casks? Like, uh, 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 are you getting barrels from anybody? Any any distilleries you're starting to yep. screw around with? Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I lose sleep over every detail of this business. Um, when we started doing barrel aged and you know unique one off type of beers, um, a lot of brands were doing it. I took a approach of doing it like an annual special release with a specific intention and purpose behind it. So we age our red ale that has rye in the malt bill in Woody Creek rye barrels. Okay, okay. Um, that comes out every year. We do our Imperial Stout in Breck Distillery barrels. That comes out every year. Um, we do a bl version of our Blonde Ale fermented um, and aged in French oak wine barrels from a family friend's winery. And so it's soured with Lacto PDO Brett, okay. Colorado peaches. Um, so sour aged blonde okay. from Aspen. That beer is called the Cougar. It comes out once a year and we release it at Sour Aspen. aged blonde, everybody. Yeah, we release it at the Aspen Food and Wine Festival. Um, so. This is wonderful, by the way. I'm not. I'm not as cold anymore. This is just. God. Yeah. People, if you can get to Aspen, get here. It's uh, now it's a little pricey to come here, but yeah. uh, I mean May is perfect. The downtimes are perfect, quite honestly. Yeah, fall is amazing. The yeah. summer's incredible, and you can camp anywhere. It's awesome. All right, Duncan, my friend. I'll wrap this up. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, appreciate you being much here. Much appreciate. No, no, dude. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Um, Folks, if you can find the Aspen Brewing Company beer, uh, Independence Pass Ale is, is a top five IPA for me, without a doubt. So make sure you can find it. Um, I've got to ask you the, the toughest question. What's your favorite non-Aspen Brewing Company beer? Um, i got to give a shout-out to my friends at Call to Arms. Okay. Um, great guys making great beer, and um, they're having a shitload of fun doing it. Talk about living the dream. They're just <laughs> like, they have a stupid amount of fun. Um, so those guys are great. Um, I mean, to me, it's like, it's the, I don't know. It's a great industry. Yeah. It's so cool. I wish, honestly, that I think the shittiest part about owning your own brewery and running your own brewery is you get so bogged down in your own business that you, like, I mean, I go to Denver 10 times and maybe one out of 10, I get to stop by, you know, the guys that called arms and he's been one of my best friends since we were eight years old. Yeah. You know, it's, you, you're busy visiting your own accounts and doing other stuff. For sure. That, are you the one out there doing all the stuff? Like We have a great sales team, okay. kicking ass. Um, but, yeah, if I'm not here working, I'm you know on the road working with our sales team um, or doing events or visiting events. And Sweet. All right, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, wonderful interview. And uh, and thank you. Come out here to, to Aspen. Have an Aspen. Go to drink Aspen in the view. Tap. Drink, oh, drink in the view. There we go. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you.